this is RT3 with Review Team 3. I am Downloads Bacon, and with the power of positivity, I have changed lives. One of the lives I've changed is... Oh, everybody, this is Fiend! And of course, it's changed the life of this guy also. Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's CC Trainer Lee, and I gotta say that that book has really inspired me. It's, it's, it's got me so pumped for this review. I'm just, I'm just so ready to choose your episode. Now that we know what episode it is, it's time for us to check it out. Check it out! Today's episode is a doggy biscuit. The plot here is Blythe and Zoe help to train Mrs. Biscuit's dog, Poppy, prepare for a purebred dog show. But when Poppy says her intention is to lose, Blythe and Zoe need to figure out why before it's too late. At the day camp, Wiggles makes some bass returns as a self-help guru, and while he motivates the other pets to act more like him, Russell isn't so easily swayed. So, one of the best positives we can talk about is... Blythe and Zoe, because they are the characters we start off with, and really, I don't know, that scene with Zoe, I thought was pretty interesting, at least when she started getting all upset. Turns out that her, that her breed is, uh, what was it, what did they tell her? A wild dog. She's a wild dog. She's a wild purebred, apparently. Stop the wild dog! <laughs> Another Zoe rage face. I love it. She was just like, stare, stare. And I was just like, Blythe's well, like, no, it can't. Like, she had the, the power of fingers and whatever, because she was able to belly rub her. Looked like she was tickling her more than belly rub, but I thought, well, who do, what do I know? You know, to calm her down from her rage. You know, and I really got to say, Zoe can jump pretty high to get that flyer from the bulletin board there. Just saying. Oh, yeah. She <laughs> That, yeah, that was scene was pretty funny, I'll agree. Also, dumb. It's a new trait, I guess, with Lefra Zoe is that she kind of, you know, she has this wild side to her. I mean, there's been a little bit present in a number of episodes, but it's more emphasis in this one, I've noticed. Yeah, she has a wild side, and she also has her training side. Actually training Blythe to train Poppy. Uh, no, that was so good. That was really hilarious, because, like, she basically, Zoe made Blythe the dog, and it was quite funny, because it's like, something I didn't really expect was gonna happen, but it did, and then Zoe's the trainer, and Blythe is the dog. And it's kind of funny seeing Blythe do all these dog-like things. Yeah, it just kind of makes me wonder how Zoe was expected to win if she doesn't like doing the obstacle courses. Yeah, yeah, that was something I was beginning to ponder, but then I realized, hey, she's not competing, someone else is. Yeah, so it doesn't matter to her. Yeah, and I gotta give Blythe some major props for you know, jumping up and catching that frisbee. Yeah, that, that was impressive. Kind of reminded me of that Rob Schneider movie. He was like the animal. <laughs> We're not supposed to talk about that movie. It shouldn't exist. Rob Schneider was just... Uh, I, I forget how, like, how they... CC... Yeah. I can see it now. <laughs> Blythe Baxter is an up-and-coming fashion designer who seemed to have it all. Until one day, she got into a dumbwaiter accident and encountered some pets, and her life changed forever. Not only is she able to talk to pets, but she's about to become a dog. What the? And now, she's about to find out that being a good girl can sometimes be a bad thing. Blythe Baxter is the dog, rated PG-13. But yes, in all seriousness, it was really good to see Zoe and Blythe take the time to train dog under the ownership of one of the biscuits, and that biscuit, Eliza, our next positive. I love her so much! She's amazing! She's adorable! Everything is amazing about her. But yeah, this was more development for Eliza. She had a small appearance in Steamed, but I felt that this um, adapted and made her character much better than her appearance in Steamed, as we get to learn a little bit more about her. And, and well, we learned that she owns a little puppy. A yes. little puppy. A little puppy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Puppy! She owns a little doggy named Poppy, and while well, she still sings excessively. And we love it. Yes. A doer is a, a do it wait, is a quitter who a, quit quitting. A doer is a quitter who quit quitting, much like how a stander is a sitter who quit sitting. Something like that. You know what, sitting? I quit became a stander. <laughs> <laughs> So, I uh, I really did enjoy her character in this one, yeah. Heck, she's so 
energetic for she's crazy energetic she's skipping in the park and all that stuff I swear she's like and with how much she sings and everything she feels like a disney princess that just married that wrong guy which i think is fisher you know he's evil and stuff <laughs> yeah. one of my favorite lines is what she said is kind of neat friends in that rolling of her eyes i love it Whitney and Brittany. <laughs> i actually love the voice she has so like shannon Chan kent that's the one <laughs> Shannon Chan Kent does an excellent job. I didn't even know it was her. It sounds, uh, it, she, she always sounds so much like Tabitha's doing the voice. That's the thing. It's crazy. She got inspired by Tabitha's senpai. Her little chemistry with Blythe was still good, and you know, talking to her daughter was that was still good. Uh, I still love that moment though. At least, at least when she when she was starting to get sad and depressed, you know, about dog uh, not being, you know, wanting to go in the competition. Yeah, you know, the biscuits come and uh, they they're there for her, and it's such a sweet moment that no one really talks about. <laughs> it was a sweet moment. I liked it. like a little hug. You know, the biscuits really care about the mommy. It's like I like this. Oh my god, the cashmere velvet came back. I loved it, and when it said like was it. Uh, grand chinchillas or something. Yeah, yeah the uh, grand chinchilla or something. <laughs> something like that. That was hilarious. Though. That was like, it was nice to see Casper and Bilbo back again, especially since well, they were like, he was the, the cute little moment like that. I loved it. It was nice. Yeah. Still funny afterwards that they took her wallet. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was hilarious. <laughs> hilarious. Caring and compassionate biscuits, only if there's money involved. <laughs> Well, speaking of biscuits, I guess we can talk about Poppy. <gasps> I love the little doggy. We all love that doggy. And purebred. Purebred? Yeah, uh, yeah, no. <laughs> Anything but purebred. Ah, uh, I like Poppy. She was cute and, well, voiced by one of my favorite voice actresses. Kathleen Barr. Oh, of course. I like the little voice she gave, like the whole, um, the first voice she had, a little offshore sounded voice, like the, oh, hello, poppy, blah, blah, blah. And then, and of course, the, uh, forget about the, like, Josie voice she had or something. I like that. <laughs> the oh. similar voice that Zoe had back in Grounded when she, when she decided to embrace the mutt lifestyle. Yes, <laughs> apparently all mutts have a jersey voice. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> that makes total sense to me. I <laughs> That was funny to listen to. Like, uh, Poppy is a. It's nice to see in another new guest pet in the episodes. Uh, she was a really good one, at least. And, and, and it's, I like the bond her and Mrs. Biscuit had because that was just really cute and how Mrs. Biscuit loved her and hugged her. And I was like, no, I love this, this, this thing. They have going on. Oh, Poppy and owner thing. I like it. It's cute. I love her so much that I, that I don't even care if she's not a purebred. Sweet. <laughs> yeah, that was really sweet to know that even though Eliza thought that Poppy was nothing but purebred, she was still willing to keep this little dog just because she loved it. Doesn't matter what kind of dog it is, or like how like upper class it could be, if you love it, Oh, uh, I see Eliza's also showing like she's doing it a little bit more like she doesn't care as much about that sort of thing as saying like maybe Fisher would because I feel like if this was Fisher he would just decide the damn thing. Uh, he would just be like, "What? Not a purebred?" <sighs> just proud. So it's nice that we to see that uh, Eliza's not like that. She would. She still loves her little Poppy. She's a really nice character. So love her. Yeah. So that's one guest pet. But then we think about the other guest pets we have. The return of Wiggles McSunbass. Yeah. Or however he talks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how he talks. And he's dead. Yeah. I'll be honest here, I, I was I liked Wiggles in this episode. I mean, I don't really remember like, much about him in his first appearance, but I remember like, I wasn't really that fond of him in his first episode. But here uh, I actually like him a lot more. I feel like his character's developed a lot more in it. It's nice to see him interacting with the pets. Yeah. It was, I thought it was pretty interesting. You know, how he would have his little positive speeches. And then the song from The Who would play. So that, that was a pretty <laughs> yeah. interesting. It's like Bob O'Reilly starts like, jamming up as soon as he starts speaking. It's like, okay then, Wiggles. You're just making like, Who references and stuff when you speak. He's like, out here in the field. <laughs> <laughs> out here in the fields, I learned about the power of positivity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading my book. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. The, whole, the whole thing with Wiggles, like, making a second appearance and him with the personality he has. Reminds me so much of this WWE tag team called The New Day, and the way Wiggles acts in this episode is exactly how The New Day 
axe whenever whenever they make it up here at Ziggy. The, the whole time, I'm just thinking that maybe in like an alternate universe, Wiggles, Wiggles would have his carry door open and, and say something like, Oh, Littlest Pet Shop! Don't you dare be sour! Clap for your world-famous two-time day camper and feel the power! It's a new Wiggles, yes it is. <laughs> oh man, if only that were real. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Of course, he has to have the trombone, Francesco. <laughs> please, please, don't make me laugh more. <laughs> Way goes rocks. Way goes rocks. Way. Beam, do it with us. Beam. Wiggles. Rocks. Yeah. Wiggles. Rocks. 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 Rocks.
B-plot play a big factor in it was how when Wiggles decided to do a little slight heel turn in that plot, Russell brings up the fact that he should talk to Blythe about, uh, about saying certain things out loud. And that's what Blythe was doing in her own plot as well, and Zoe brings, brings that up to Blythe too. It's like they were in perfect sync. They're meant for each other. Yeah. Baron and Sphinx. <laughs> the leading character and the favorite. It's no wonder, she said. I'll miss you most of all at the end of Summertime Blues. Actually, if we re-listen to that part, or that part, it's like, I'll miss you most of all because you remind me of myself like like to the T. Love you, Russell. See, I think it was like that. I don't know. I, I might be wrong. This is time around Every now and then I fall apart and I need Russell here tonight. He's a favorite. Oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, more Russell wasn't needed at all. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, Russell messed up the B plot, but the A plot was going amazingly awesome, I think. Until the ending. Then it kind of was, well, I guess CC could say it. How convenient. Very, very convenient. It turns out that, oh, it's not a purebred. Instead of, you know, well, she can't compete in the competition. Or she lost. To be you. Yeah, it just sucks to be you. No, it's like, oh, you want another big ass trophy. You want purest mixed breed. So, she just got a new trophy just conveniently made on the same day, or she was just given the trophy because of her honesty? I don't know. The, the whole ending seems like you got to have your cake and eat it too. It just doesn't seem fair that you have a non-purebred competing in this purebred only dog show, and yet you still get a prize out of it when the big revelation is revealed that you have a dog who is not up to the show standards. Well, because I also found this kind of funny because, well, uh... I guess it's, the, the, we already established earlier that I guess they're pretty strict on their rules, but if they wouldn't let Zoe compete, it's like, I said that they allow this. It was a little bit weird, like, I feel like they, they shouldn't have really done that. They could have just had it, like, they should have, it would have been, to me, their end, it would have just been like, the lesbian, be like, it doesn't matter if we won or we lost, as long as we enjoyed it, sort of thing. Maybe that would have been a little bit better than them just, you know, throwing out a trophy, like, oh, she won anyway, you know, ha ha ha, she won. Oh, uh, Fisher just slipped us 50 bucks, so here's a Trophy, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I would pretty much believe that that did happen. <laughs> like, it just seems way too, as Cece says, convenient. Anyway, so this episode, Doggy Biscuit, is a fairly good episode. Uh, I do enjoy this one a lot. The biscuits are always great. Life was good in this one, so it was pretty good. Unfortunately, this was another Russell episode, and uh, really, it's a shame that this one's actually pretty good, but just the amount of Russell that we're getting is just ridiculous. Like, if we wouldn't have so much of him before, this would actually be really, like, it would, I would probably give this one a 10 or a 9.9 or something. But we've had so much Russell, and just, it's, it's reached the point where I don't like looking at the character. I haven't gotten annoyed by the voice, because Sam Vince is an awesome voice actor, that, but just, I don't like the character. And seeing this much of him, yeah, it's like, I don't know, it's like watching it, I don't know, just in, insert any show with the worst character or, like, the least favorite of yours, and then just have that shown a thousand times. But to my score, I guess I'll give this episode, I'll give it a 9 out of it. It's still really, 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 really good and enjoyable, but again, we got Russell and the odd ending, so it's a great episode, just those two things kind of bring it down. <laughs> I guess I can move on to my fun thoughts for this episode. Well, it was nice to see Zoe back again since the last episode kind of we saw Zoe as the main character that happened. But it was awesome to see Zoe back again in a much better appearance here. It was nice to see I loved Eliza. Eliza was nice. <laughs> And the cute little poppy, great wiggles, like much better here. And this Russell's the only thing that really kind of brought this episode down for me. And like the April ending was just kind of like a, eh, eh. It, could, it did sort of bring it down slightly, but not as much as Russell in my opinion. But like, I guess just to keep this short, I'll um, say a nine. Point twenty five. It's a good episode, but if it didn't have Russell be like one of the main focuses, it could have been much better. As far as a doggy biscuit goes, it is a really yeah, it's not decent. But I guess if I can't think of another word, decent is as good as it would be. I really enjoyed Blythe and Zoe's time here. It was great seeing Poppy, this so-called purebred. It was, you know, she was good, funny, honest. So that's nice. Eliza, always, always a charm to see her and. Having her with Poppy really, really adorable. I like that. The only problem with their plot is just the ending. It just feels like you got to have you got to have your happy ending, but also 
lost at the same time, but they still won. It, it's just a really confusing ending. It's not really the best that they've done, but it's it's there. As for the B plot with Wiggles and the other pets, it was it was something. If Russell wasn't involved so much, it probably could have been better. Or if maybe the pet was not Russell, maybe a different pet could have been in Russell's place. But unfortunately, that was not the case. As for Wiggles himself, I really did like seeing his character again doing all of this power positivity stuff with the empowerment just to have this girl day camper at his other day camp just to like him. Really, it really does teach you that lesson to just, you know, again, be yourself just like we've had in other episodes. So that's always good to be reminded of that. Wiggles definitely needed that. So, other than that and the manifestation of bananas, I'll give this episode an 8 out of 10. Still decent, and that's really all you know. Alrighty, well that was the awesome, very positive review done by Review Team for your all team 3. So, our power of positivity will spread to the next one, which will be... What's the next episode? Oh, I just can't believe that you didn't actually know. I can't believe that you forgot about it. Our next episode is called It's a Happy, 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 Happy One. Interesting. Oh, yeah. It's a happy, 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 happy episode. I can tell. Something tells me it's not going to be. Anyway. <laughs> or will it? <laughs> they seriously will try. Or will they? I guess maybe we'll just have to decide next time. So, this is Review Team 3 r 3 Like I stated just a couple of seconds ago. Sign it out. Peace out, home slices. You know, uh, I would usually say cheerio darlings, but instead I'm gonna say, don't forget about it. <laughs> and of course, Pat Shopper, we'll be seeing you and you in the next episode. So, thanks, and say it with me now. Thanks again. Are we done here? <laughs>